All right, here we are for honors physics, um, electrostatics, Coulomb's law, problems three. Um, okay, so problem three is a uh, somewhat more complicated problem. It says we want to take a look at the most common isotope of hydrogen. It's called protium. That's just a proton and an electron. Uh, and they say they tell you they're separated by about five times ten to the negative eleven meters. <clears throat> the mass of a proton is roughly one point seven times ten to the negative twenty seven kilograms, and the mass of an electron. Uh, it says here it's 9.0 times 10 to the negative 31. It's really 9.1, but uh, whatever. 9 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. We'll go with it. Uh, so it says, uh, part A, use Newton's law of universal gravitation to calculate the gravitational force between a proton and an electron in a hydrogen atom. Uh, and part B says, now knowing that those, those particles, the proton and the electron, they have the same size charge, uh, what we call an elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, can you find the electrical force between them? And then part C, they want you to compare those. So uh, let's start, uh, go ahead and split this up. Let's make uh, this side the gravitational force, this side the electrical force. So uh, let's do the gravitational force calculation first. And so we say, well, my gravitational force is going to be given by uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. So we'll say, okay, big G, mass of the first object, mass of the second object, divided by the distance between them squared. The electrical force. Of course, we'll calculate on the other board um, using Coulomb's law. The electric force is that Coulomb's law constant K uh, times the charge of the first object, charge of the second object over the distance squared. And of course, those two equations are very, very similar to each other. And as we've uh, talked before about how they're both inverse square relationships with distance. Uh, because of the way those influences have to spread out in three dimensions, uh, as they spread out, the influence spreads out over a bigger, bigger surface area sphere. So uh, my intensity of the field drops with one over the surface area sphere, one over four pi r squared. But anyway, uh, and you know this depends on charges, this one depends on masses, and of course we're going to have different constants to make the units work out right. Uh, but that's basically the same setup. Let's run through and do the gravitation calculation first. So I'm just going to substitute in my values. This is what we would call a plug and chug. Uh, big G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, masses, mass of the first of the proton, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Mass of an electron, 9 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Divided by the separation distance, uh, which is 5 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. And then it's squared. OK. Um, I didn't really make a big deal of this, but Big G, uh, this variable, this uh, constant has units of newtons, kilograms, meters squared. What? What am I doing? Newtons, meters squared per kilogram squared. Sorry. Uh, so, of course, the things we put in, they have to be in matching units. This is in newtons, meters squared per kilogram squared. So, these have to be in kilograms, and this has to be in meters, which they are. So, we're all good. Okay, I'm ready to do this calculation. Um, you know that I like to separate my powers of 10 out. So if I were to do this, I'd do 6.67 times 1.7 times 9 divided by, this is going to be squared, so that 5 squared. And then the powers of 10, I do have uh, to the side in my head, so I don't have to punch this in the calculator, I'm just punching this in the calculator. I feel like I'm less likely to make a mistake that way. 10 to the negative 27, 10 to the negative 31, that's 10 to the negative 58. Uh, times 10 to the negative 11, that'd be 10 to the negative 69. Divided by negative 11 squared, that's a negative 22. When I divide by it, I'm going to subtract. All right, so it flips the sign and becomes uh, plus 22. So negative 69 plus 22 is negative 47. Uh, so that's it. I can punch this number in my calculator. And if I do that, and I punch in uh, 6.67 times 1.7 times 9, and I divide by 5 squared. Then I end up with 4.08. So my answer is 4.08 times 10 to the negative 47 newtons. That's my gravitational force between a proton and an electron in a hydrogen atom. Okay, let's do the electrical calculation now. The electrical calculation, again, is another plug and chug sort of thing. My k is 9 times 10 to the 9, that universal constant. And again, that's it has units to go with it. It's in newtons meter squared per, kil per coulomb squared. And so these guys have to be in units of coulombs and meters to get this out in newtons. And we were given those units, so everything's good. Uh, charges, we say we've got 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 
And this is 1.6 times the negative 19. Just a reminder, when we use Coulomb's law, we are only putting in the absolute values of the charges. Okay, we're just putting the magnitudes. We're not worrying about plus or minus, and then our force we get out will be positive. Not worry about plus or minus. Plus or minus on a force, we mean we want, want to mean direction of it. And this equation cannot tell us direction left, right, because if I have two things, uh, say, say attracting to the proton electron, the forces on them will be in opposite directions. And you can't say which one of those forces is this giving us. You know what I mean? Uh, so we put the sign on ourselves when we get to the sigma f step in solving a problem. We add forces, we'll do forces one way minus the other way. That's when we make them positive or negative, not when we're plugging in. Okay, so continuing on, sorry about that. Uh, the denominator, again, is that 5 times 10 to the negative 11 meters, and it's going to be squared. So in order to square that. Okay, that's my setup. Again, you know that I like to do my, uh, my coefficients out in front, my powers of 10 to the side. So this would be 9 times 1.6 times 1.6. Divided by 5 squared. And then my powers of 10, negative 19, negative 19, that would be negative 38, times a positive 9, that would be negative 29, divided by negative 22. So negative 29 divided by negative 22, that would be like when I divide, I'll, be, I'll have to flip the sign, and so I'll be adding 22 to the negative 29. So you say negative 29 plus 22 is negative 7. Okay, uh, let's punch this in the calculator. If I do so, uh, 9 times 1.6 times 1.6 divided by 25 uh, gives me like 0. 0.9216 times 10 to the negative 7. And you're like, hey, um, it's standard. When, I, when you get this thing going on, you say it's standard to put the decimal point one after the first digit. So I'd be multiplying by a positive 10. You know what I mean? And so I've got to flip to, to balance it out. I've got to make this a negative eight. I've got to divide by 10 one more time. So my electrical force in like normal uh, exponential notation here uh, will be 10 to the negative eight. There we go. So that's my electrical force. Okay. So that's my answers for gravitational force strength and uh, electrical force strength on a proton electron in a hydrogen atom. And it asks now how many orders of magnitude greater is how many powers of 10 greater is the electric force than the gravitational force for that proton electron in a hydrogen atom. So we're just thinking about powers of 10. Uh, I'm going to do this uh, a quick uh, a quick and rough way, and that is to say, hey, real quick, um, I'm just going to take this to the nearest power of 10. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick like power of 10 estimate, order of magnitude estimate. So this 4, is that going to round up? To be 10 or down to be 1, 10 to the second power versus 10, 10 to the first power versus 10 to the zero power. You say 4 is closer to 1 than to 10. I'm going to call this, so this is just roughly, very, very, very roughly, approximately, 10 to the minus 47. What about this one? 9.2, is that going to round up to 10 or down to 1? Is that like I'm adding another power of 10 here? It's like a 10. So 10 times 10 to the minus 8, this will be approximately. 10 to the minus 7 degrees. And so I can see this is 40 orders of magnitude smaller than this. So my gravitational force is just incredibly smaller, incredibly weak, compared to the electrical force. And when you say like 40 orders of magnitude, you mean that's a 1 with 40 zeros after it, right? Electrical is 1 with 40 zeros after it times stronger than the gravitational force. And so you say, gosh, if I'm doing a problem where I just have charged particles and looking at forces between them, that gravitational force is insignificant compared to the electrical force. You wouldn't even put it in the calculation, the gravitational. It's just that weak in comparison. So that's going to be the case when your particles, we're talking about uh, micro, sub, microscopic or sub, I wouldn't even want to, subatomic, you know, teeny tiny particles, right? So if you can see the things, you're probably, the gravity might be big enough for you to have to start taking into account. If you're talking about things that are so small you can't even see them, at that scale, you don't even worry about gravity. You just worry about the electrical force. All right, so that is, uh, that is it for problem two.